the Lusitani. Back in 2017, I joined the YouTube scene with my very first series about pre-Indo-European civilizations. It only had three episodes and it was honestly crappy, but very few people know that I had planned a fourth and fifth episode for that series that never saw the light of day. The Lusitanians were the topic of the fourth episode and they are finally getting the attention they deserve. So let's get on with it. Let's roll the intro. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Also, this video is also about the Latonis. Please go on. The Lusitanians and the Vetones lived in the area that I superficially refer to as Northern Portugal and the land around it that is also owned by Spain. There were two cattle herder based civilizations organized in loose confederations of tribes that came together in time of need. The Lusitanians and Vetones have always been close, both culturally and politically, both sharing a lot of cultural and religious characteristics with Celtic and pre-Indo-Europeans alike. The Lusitanians in particular are credited for spreading the belief of many Iberian gods and deities that kept on being worshipped up the very end of the Western Roman Empire. The Vetones, on the other hand, are remembered for their huge animal sculptures made out of granite that they left around the countryside. During the ancient times, however, they were remembered uh, as fierce warriors and proud mercenaries. The first time we hear of the military campaigns is in the 3rd century BC, when they allied with the Lusitanians against the Carthaginians during the expansion by Azrubal the Fair and Hannibal. They were not exactly successful, but they still were able to impress the Carthaginians so much that they hired enough of them to make a contingent that fought under Hannibal during the Second Punic War against Rome. In 194 BC, Rome took control over the Lusitanian and the Taunus territory. They did not take this lightly and spent over a decade trying to fight the Romans back, but to no avail. By 179 BC, things seemed to have calmed down and the two confederations reached an agreement with Rome. However, this wouldn't last, as a Lusitanian leader called Ponicus convinced both the Vetones and his own tribe to restart war with Rome in 155. Punicus died in battle pretty early on, so his second in command, Caosenus, took over and drove the Romans on the other side of the river Tagus. What seemed like the conclusion of a very long war turned bad when the Romans tricked the Lusitanians into a peace talk just to instead slaughter 10,000 of them in the year 150. Here Caucasianus died and very few other people were able to survive the massacre. One of them was the young warrior and aspiring leader Virietis who in 146 BC was elected king of the Lusitani confederation and in 143 BC he formed a huge confederation made out of Vetones, Lusitani and many other Celtiberian tribes. His campaigns in Turritania were so successful that they inspired people in Numatia and Gaul to fight back against their Roman oppressors too. Viriatus took advantage of the hilly terrain to apply aggressive guerrilla tactics. He understood that facing Romans on an open field would have been his doom, so there was never a decisive battle against Rome, just a lot of ambushes and the Romans were no match to it. So they decided to cheat. In 139 BC, Viriatus sent three Turditani warriors named Audax, Titalcus and Minurus to Hispania Ult Ulterior, as in southern Spain which today will probably be called Andalusia or something, I'm not too sure, to find a peace agreement with their longtime enemies, the Romans. But they instead were bribed by the governor Quintus Servilius Capio, who told them to kill Viriatus instead. So as soon as they came back to Lusitania, they killed him on his leap. Funnily enough, 
The three mercenaries were never rewarded for their actions as the Romans refused to when they came back, since in their own words they didn't want to be associated with traitors. After the death of Viriatus, the Lusitanians kept fighting under the leadership of Tautalus. The Romans would finally give the Lusitanians the land they originally had asked for before the massacre, finally ending the seemingly endless war. Nevertheless, the total pacification of Lusitania was only achieved under Augustus. Under Roman rule, Lusitania and its people gradually acquired the Roman culture and language. Viriatus stands as the most successful leader who ever opposed the Roman conquest in Iberia. During the course of his campaigns, he was only defeated in battle against the Romans once, and from a military standpoint, can be said to have been one of the most successful generals to ever, op to ever oppose Rome's expansion. He's considered a hero both in Portugal and Spain alike. This wraps up the Ancient Iberian series. I hope you enjoyed and uh, you will stick around for more. These past two years have been great and I have uh, great plans for this channel. For all the ones who would like to get to know me and give me more uh, direct suggestions or if you want to help me create a community around my channel, you can join my Discord. The link is in the description and in the comments. I don't expect a lot and that's why I'm doing it. I would like to start with, um, what do we say, perhaps the most uh, loyal fans and then uh, we can start from there. That being said, have a good day everyone and I will see you next time.